getting ready to listen to Porcupine Tree, Closure, Continuation, in Atmos, from the Blu-ray. For that, I'm going to be pairing my OPPO BDP-103 with my Denon 6400H. Processes full Dolby Atmos. And I'm using a 7.2.4 speaker array. Dolby Atmos. And I'm going to be using both of my offboard amps. The 5 channel lamp up there, the A5, and an A800 that I've bridged some channels on. It's a 6 channel amp, so that covers all of my 11 speaker needs. All right. I'm going to go listen and uh, I'll be back with you in a while. All right, so today we are talking about Closure Continuation, the latest album, the latest deluxe set from Porcupine Tree, um, which is at this time Stephen Wilson, Gavin Harrison, and Richard Barbieri. Let's look a little bit at the deluxe set in terms of its content, and then I uh, just want to discuss the music, the uh, mixing. So you have this slip case for the deluxe set. The, um, the front looks like some sort of a textured print, and then the back, I think the graphic is actually stuck on there, just a sticker. You um, have this beginning of this like very minimalist artwork with this kind of generic, I don't know if it's Helvetica kind of font, but it just looks kind of generic. Like if you're at the supermarket and you bought a box, yellow box with black print that says breakfast cereal. I don't know. Maybe that's part of what they're going for here. I don't like the uh, cardboard jacket that the discs come in. They come tucked in straight into like a little slot in the cardboard come on it's not is it is it asking too much you know to provide them their own sleeve or maybe put them in a you know a poly protective sleeve something like that ay, ay, ay. i don't know you have some sort of skin cells or something that may be kind of like the most uninterrupted artwork in this entire set looking at the book the um, hype sticker is really proud that you get a deluxe edition with an exclusive book. And I think, I think every page of this book, the art is interrupted by this white square. And again, you have like pages and pages of kind of this basic text, this basic font. And what is this? What is this? Is this a phone number? Is this the number you call to get your money back if you don't like this set? Um, so you have these pictures. And I don't know what they were going for here, but they went through the trouble of finding these photographs or somebody took them uh, specifically for the project. And then you, know, you plastered this white square on it. And I think maybe it's meant to make us miss something I'm like oh i wish i could see the whole image I'm missing out and then you wonder what would have been there or maybe maybe they're hoping our brains would actually kind of create what's what's hidden behind the white square like your brain has to fill it in i mean our brains fill in a big old massive hole in our eyesight anyway right where our optic nerve attaches yeah i don't know you do get the lyrics to every song, including the um, bonus songs. So that's cool. It did help me connect a little bit better with the material to read those lyrics. And I'm pretty sure that if you stream the Atmos or stereo version on a service like Apple Music, you, you sometimes can read lyrics along with that. And if I recall, when I tested um, closure continuation or at least like a couple of the songs, I think the lyrics were there. But don't quote me on that unless I'm right. 
Uh, love in the past tense. Never have. Okay, so you... All right, <laughs> you get this book. It does have the lyrics of the songs, but it has these pages that are just blocked out with these white blocks. And to be honest with you, it kind of reminds me of The Next Day uh, by David Bowie, where that album was just supposed to be like, I don't know, thematically, artistically, like a, like a continuation of Heroes. And um, I don't know if they were going for like, you know, kind of like putting post-its on the old artwork to like make notes about how to expand on it, but then they just left it with the post-its. I'm not sure, but I don't really love this concept. I, I think I would rather just look at the actual images, but here's a picture of a page with lyrics. They're pretty small, but even though I am uh, sometimes in need of assistance for reading, I can still read it with just my unaided eyesight. So not too terribly small. Okay, now I'm going to play for you a couple minutes of of what's in the um, the Atmos. I'm gonna shoot a few moments of the heights and the rears, just for that person who said they don't think that there's a lot of height activity on this album. I have my ground mix amp off, so I'm only powering the heights and the rears. So I'm hearing vocal effects, keyboard effects, extra guitars, some drums, like maybe the, the room treatment for the drums. Seems like plenty. There's even some lead vocal and some rhythm acoustic guitar up there. So plenty going on up there in the Atmos, and in my opinion, stereo Atmos uh, mixes both sound great. I haven't played the dedicated 5.1 mix. Um, friends say that they really dig it, that it's just top quality. Um, I don't like this album. Musically, I just don't like it. Uh, there are a handful of songs that I sort of like, <laughs> dislike the least, I don't know, from the actual album. Let me see. Harry Dan, it's got, you know, a funky and um, enjoyable bass line. Rat's Return has probably the coolest, like, weirdest riff of the album. And then uh, Chimera's Wreck has this kind of haunting um, guitar passage. It goes through movements, and to me it actually feels kind of like, like it's the strongest connector to what I consider the best of Porcupine Tree, and so like maybe if the first six tracks were closure and Chimera's Wreck were continuation and we could expect more of that on Porcupine Tree's next album, I would be pretty happy with that. Uh, not to mention Population 3 and Instrumental, Never Have, and Love in the Past Tense are possibly my three favorite songs from this entire set. I really wish they had been included in the album proper or at least if they could be um, included on the Blu-ray anywhere at all. The Blu-ray is pretty bare. It just has the album proper in Stereo 5.1 and Atmos. There are no videos, no Air Studios um, footage. The bonus tracks have been left off entirely, not even available in high-res stereo, and um, definitely not mixed in surround or immersive. And so, I'm not, I'm not crazy about the value of this set. It's almost like they were giving us an incentive to have to listen to CD2, which I don't know why they would do that. CDs, you know, may be notable to people like me. You know, I still have a CD player in my car, so I do um, pretty routinely enjoy my CD collection, but I'm already going to listen to it if I want to play it in the car, so why force us? <laughs> you know, put put those three songs on the bonus uh, Blu-ray, and then not to mention the um, instrumental version of the album. I I somewhat prefer that to the vocal version. Um, I find it pretty hard to get into what 
Wilson was going for here. Uh, the album just definitely doesn't speak to me, um, not not nearly in the way that In Absentia does, Fear of a Blank Planet. Um, I'm not in love with the artwork here, you know, interrupting the artwork with these white splotches. Um, I'm not crazy about the songs. These just, somehow the album just doesn't feel like it holds together. I'm not really crazy about the softer ballady stuff. There are some notable riffs, but uh, there's also this one moment during Herd Calling, and, and oh, you know, it's not just one moment. It's all over the song. They bring it back over and over and over again, and maybe just to, like, refer to it, you know, time or two, it's this interval, this, ah, uh, that um, I didn't really like it from the first I heard it. I think it is meant to be unnerving, but um, it's just repeated so much that I've really grown really not to like it. And if I uh, never hear heard calling again, vocal or instrumental, because of that, uh, that'll be okay with me. And that's a little sad. Um, I know that the subject matter of heard calling is supposed to be intense and maybe bother us a little bit. Um, you know, these liars that are that are preying on us. Uh, maybe preying on our comfort and safety and our autonomy, you know, like maybe fascist politicians or something. But, you know, like Pink Floyd managed to um, sell that message on animals, uh, which fortunately is coming out this month uh, in 5.1. And uh, to make it, you know, ominous enough, but I still enjoy all the melodies. I'm not like irritated by anything on animals. And I'm, I'm irritated <laughs> by this riff from Herd Calling. Musically, this album just isn't a huge winner for me. I only like a few of the songs. I like the bonus songs better, and I miss them on the Blu-ray. So, you know, for, for mix, um, stereo, Atmos, I can vouch for personally, and other people like the 5.1, I would give this full marks, you know, 10 out of 10. Musically, this just isn't doing it for me. Uh, you know, and my my bona fides, as, you know, they would say in Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? You know, I like plenty of Stephen Wilson. If you go back to the beginning of this channel, back a few years ago, the first thing I did, like, while I was still overseas, waiting to come home from a combat tour, and trying not to go crazy, so I kind of thought up this channel and started making some content for it, just like from my bunk and from a USO sound room. Anyway, um, I did a primer on like what Stephen Wilson had been up to um, to that point. And I love plenty of his albums, uh, especially Raven, especially Hand, um, To the Bone. I don't like a couple tracks, but I like the majority of the album. And um, like I said, you know, I like In Absentia, I like uh, Dead Wing, Fear of a Blank Planet, and the incident's okay, but it has this one annoying song, and so I guess this album does too. Uh, yeah, I can't rate this one super strongly. I don't think I really want to listen to it again, and I definitely wouldn't use this to get a fan into Porcupine Tree. So I'd have to give this like maybe like like less than average, you know, like maybe a four or five out of 10. And then um, in terms of sonics, this thing sounds amazing. You know, it sounds wonderful. I love that Gavin is pretty prominent in the mix. And um, that probably is the best thing going here for me. And it might be why I like the instrumentals the best. Um, Gavin mixed the drums. So you get his drum mix, you know, stereo or Atmos, um, you know, the way he intended it. And then you you get to hear his parts more intricately just because, you know, some some stuff is removed out of the way. So, you know, sonically, I'd give this full marks. And then for value, I'd just give this zero, zero points. So I'd have to say, if you um, dig Porcupine Tree, like, you know, you're Stephen Wilson, Porcupine Tree completist, then obviously you have to get this and you probably already have it. If you're on the fence, um, this is an expensive set, I think. It's going for, you know, like between 60 and $80, depending on when and where you find it. And I just, I don't feel the values there. Um, you know, the Future Bites was a pretty stark 
you know, art concept, and so is this one. I wonder, you know, if Stephen Wilson is just sort of jaded or, you know, maybe cynical about the music business, but, but don't take that out on the fans. This really feels, you know, like almost pushing things to the point of taking advantage. All right. So I don't feel the values there at all. So I'd have to say, like, if you want to check out um, the music just to see if you agree with me or whatever, then just maybe stream it. I think they have some content up on YouTube. Um, or if you already have, you know, a music service, then, you know, check it out there. Um, don't go in, you know, for the high dollars that are being asked for the set. I just don't think it's worth it. Um, the best mix in the world, stereo, 5.1 or Atmos, can't save music that you're not digging. And this just isn't going to be in the repeat section of my collection it, it's just not all right so um i i hope whether you're a porcupine tree fan stephen wilson fan or surround enthusiast or just a music lover or whatever um even if you don't agree with me i hope you just appreciate you know that i'm willing to give my honest opinion um if you decide to check out this album i hope you love it and if you do let us know leave a comment this is just you know my opinion um uh, just trying to give you my feedback from my listening experiences um, if you like what I do, please subscribe, ring the notification bell, like the video, share the video, leave your comments. It all helps us all enjoy music together and to live life in surround.